here's where I'm kind of having trouble. Uh, so there's two points where I'm really having problems, but, but I would say even the smaller problem is that when I do the meetings, I'm having a bit of a tough time closing the sale, mm -hmm. uh, which we can talk about in a moment. But the main thing, the main thing that's like been driving me crazy is I, I'm really, really, really bad at dealing with call reluctance. Mm. Mm. You know, okay. like not, not wanting to do the cold call, not wanting to get on the phone. And, and I believed like, oh, if I only have like really good numbers, I won't have call reluctance anymore. Like, and now I do, like I, like I said, every fourth call is a meeting, but, but I'm not like, I have days, like three days sometimes where I just find every excuse like, oh, I'm busy with, uh, you know, clients right now. I, and, and I can't get, set myself down. And so I try to go and only do like three a day and then only do like one a day. And I, I'll do it for like a few days. And then I have like a negative experience and I'll, mm. I'll like stop for like a week. Oh, okay. That's not good. That's not good at all. Yeah. Okay. So how, okay. how, how do you deal with that in your experience? Uh, okay. Well, I think it's more to do with internal belief system than to do with the external people. And I think you know it better. You've actually, you know, have mastered the mindset. Um, the way I look at it is if I'm starting something new as a start of the day, I would probably go after people who are low level just to get the, you know, the positive vibes going, right? Maybe, you know, not probably hit the top guys or maybe the you know, CEO of those company. Maybe I'll go low level just to boost my own confidence that, Hey, people are ready to talk. Okay. I think that's, that's one hack, which I can tell you. But I think even if you go a little deeper into it, I think somewhere we should believe in what we are doing hundred percent or even thousand percent that, Hey, whatever I'm doing is actually not to sell, but actually to help and serve somebody else. Like in your case, it's really, really a classic, classic example that if somebody doesn't have a good website, the conversion would not be that good. As simple as that. So if you come from that aspect that thinking that, Hey, that guy needs my help. I can really help that person to build a good website. Even if he doesn't pay, it's fine. I can really, really help. And I, I want to help that person. Once you come from there, I think a lot of you know, belief system, a lot of hurdles that we have, I think that will be shattered. So I think the best thing to do is sell yourself every single day. As Grant Cardone also says, the biggest sale that I, you, know, you can make in your life is selling yourself on your product and services. I think probably, you know, start your day with some affirmations on specifically dedicatedly or sales, right? I think Grant Cardone has some, some, you know, affirmations on sales or something. I don't know, but you make up your own affirmations, right? Starting from morning, you, you say that people love me for delivering exceptional services. I am somebody who loves to help my clients something on those lines and just have like five or 10 or whatever affirmation you have and just read that out loud your day or cold call. And once you start doing that, it will start getting ingrained in your head that yes, what, what you're doing here is not asking for a business, but you're actually adding more value to that person. And that's where you're, that's why you're calling. But once you come from there, no matter what objection you get, no matter how you know, tough the customer will be, will be able to convince them with your sheer determination and your willingness to serve them. I think that is so profound. This, this battle is not between you and them. This battle is between you and your own belief system. So once you, once you fight that battle every morning and you know, once you believe that, okay, I'm going to win every day, I think you will have lesser and lesser days. Uh, I think there's no rocket science. There's no magic formula. It is just you, what you believe about your product, what you believe about yourself is what's going to define how good you will be on the call. Uh, second thing which used to help me is I used to crack jokes when I used to call, uh, you know, those receptions. I, I you know I'm sure you must be also getting receptions a lot of time and it, it would be, you know, uh, trying to avoid you to transfer to the main decision hall, you know, maker. Uh, 
icebreaker has really, really helped. And I think, you know, going to the receptionist and just cracking jokes, wishing them happy morning or whatever it is, or how your day, you know, what is your name? Just asking them their name will itself will put you in a better position. You know, you will succeed automatically. You know, mm. how many times do you ask, ask them like, hey, well, may I know your name, please? Or what's your name? Yeah, like most you of the them, time you treat them as the obstacle. Like you reduce yeah. them to this thing you have to go through to. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Person. In, in fact, yes, yes. And that is the biggest, biggest, you know, challenge that all the salespeople face. Moment you shift your thought process from that, hey, these are the hurdles, then shift from there to, hey, these are my friends. These are the people who will help me connect with the right people. Okay. Hmm. Moment that shift happens, I think that's about it. And there are a couple of videos I've actually uploaded on YouTube on how to handle the gatekeepers. Mm. So, you know, just watch a couple of those videos and it has the live recording as well, like what I'm talking to the gatekeeper, uh, you know, that has, you know, some part of there as well of a live call. So probably, you know, you'll get some ideas on how you can track. But like whenever I was on a cold call, I, I would just make my mood really happy and I will first charge myself up you know, pump myself up and I'll talk to myself, like how we have a game, right? You know, football or whatever, you know, we self-talk that, hey, come on, man, you can do it. It's amazing. John, you need my help, man. John, come on, where are you, man? You see, that pep talk will actually have such a profound impact. And moment somebody comes on the phone that, hey, this is XYZ Corporation. And then you, you start by saying, hey, this is Robbie. Uh, what is your name, please? Sandra. Hey, Sandra, how are you today? that itself will take you to another level. And then, you know, she'll say, oh, I'm good, I'm good. You know, that will make you feel good. You'll make her feel good. And at the end of the day, everybody wins. Rather than, you know, she picks up the phone, hi, this is so-and-so's office. Instead of you saying that, hey, can I connect, can you connect me to John? Right, rather than just going the plain vanilla, try and, you know, break that ice with the gatekeeper because maybe she may not connect you to John. Uh, you know, probably she'll connect you to somebody else who you will really, really connect with. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, treating the gatekeepers or the front desk people as your buddies and as your friend, I think that goes a long way. That breaks the ice and sets you for a you know, good tone. I think that is one. Pep talk is another. Having that affirmation, you know, sales affirmation is another thing. So these three, four things, which actually helps you to sell yourself on your capability of developing awesome website, which can help them convert more. Is the is the secret to success? I think that's the secret sauce for you. I think, I think what, when you connect with the client, I think mm -hmm. you're probably good at uh, you know what you're trying to do, <clears throat> convincing. But I think that is the first challenge that you're facing, right? Yes, you, I mean you're exactly right. I'm I'm not a very social person naturally. Like I'm social mm -hmm. like this, like talking logically, or I'm, I really love giving. Uh, public speeches or coaching, but it's very logical. It's very straightforward. I'm not very good at like socializing and I've always mm. tried to like avoid it. Like I like the deep stuff, but I don't like just fluff. And mm -hmm. also when you talk like kind of, I kind of noticed that I, I'm, I'm, one of my problems is that I never try to be positive. Like it's, I'm not, I'm not a positive person at the moment like I I'm very determined I'm very straightforward I, I go hard but but I'm like I'll wake up and oh it's a, you know it's what a shitty day or oh it's look so many fucking you know stuff to take care of today or like I'm, I'm not really oh really is that how you start your day um depending depending but but yeah lots of time because I'm, I'm always busy like I'm always working 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 um and I, I love it, but I, I, but you're right. It's the mindset that, um, that is sometimes off. So I have days where I'm mm. on fire and others where I'm like, I have so much work, but I'm, I'm not in a good mood. Mm. And, so, uh, so let me ask you this, Robbie. I think this is the right time. And I think this is really important. Mm -hmm. So what is your morning routine looks like these days, you know, consistently, not just one off days? Um, there, there is no morning routine. Like I have my routine of working out and meditating. Um, but I do these things, like I schedule them sometime in the day, but I, I don't have like a 
thing that I do whenever I wake up. Usually the first thing I do when I wake up is I look at my phone, I look at the notifications, I look at the schedule for the day, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, as Grant says, I, I go pee. Uh -huh. So that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, well then, no. May, may I suggest something to you? So, as soon as you wake up, you know, don't touch the phone. Okay. Keep the phone away. First, as soon as you wake up, uh, write your goals down. I mean, this is basics. You know, of course, I don't need to teach you, but this has really, really helped me and had a profound impact on my life. Look, often what happens is we get so busy in our life that the moment we wake up, once we are out of the bed, then life controls us. We are actually controlled by these tasks we have to do, these things we have to do, and then life actually, you know, takes us from one task to another, task to another, and then that's how our day is usually scheduled. But that first hour, one hour, is when I control my brain, my thoughts, and what I want to achieve, and how I want to feel, basically, right? I do not want external forces to make me feel the way they want me to feel, right? So I want to feel the way I want to feel when I wake up, and I want to feel positive, and I want to feel excited, and I want to feel driven. I want to have that energy in the first hour, and that hour makes a hell lot of difference in the rest of my day. No matter what will hit me on that day, I know that I have such a strong mindset, which I've actually prepped myself in the morning, that I don't need to worry about any garbage which is coming at me, you know, be it the hater comments on Facebook or YouTube or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Nothing really shakes me up because of that one hour. So here's how my morning looks like. Mm -hmm. As soon as I wake up, I pick up my notepad and I write down all my goals, long-term goals, like my mission that I, I have inspired more than 10 million people. I have become a legend. People love me. You know, I'm the best husband. I'm the best father. And I have amazing body and everything, right? Starting from the business aspect, my mission aspect, to my health, to my family, and, and then, you know, whatever I want to do uh, in five years. Then I write down, what is my task of the day? What things that I want to make sure that I want to complete today, which we have on calendar, but more than the calendar, I want to look, what is it that I want to do? You know, calendar is somebody who's blocked their, you know, my calendar because of their convenience, right? But I want to control what are the top two or three things that I, I want to get is done, non-negotiable. That's what I do. And as soon as I'm done with that, I watch basically two videos, which has got profound impact on me. The first one is on uh, visualization and affirmation. Hey, somewhere, did I lose you? Okay. I'm here, yeah. I'm listening. Okay, okay, I think the net. Yeah, the net was, I think, fluctuating. So I listen to the affirmation. Uh, these days I'm following Dan Locke and uh, you know, I consider him my mentor for now. And I don't know, maybe for the rest of the life, I don't know. But Dan Locke is someone who I'm following diligently and he's had profound impact on me and my life. So I start with his video. Probably I'll share the link with you. Those are really, really good. It starts with the visualization and affirmations. Then the second video is about the millionaire declaration right millionaire mindset so that something like you know i am you know there's something you know i attract money or or money comes to me easily or effortlessly those kind of uh, you know, declaration and once i'm done with that then i have my black copy and i go directly to work out and uh, and then i you know start my day then you know i get into my notifications and all those things probably before going to the gym and i'm having a black copy I look at my phone and I look at the notification reply to WhatsApp or whatever, you know, messages on Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, but that, that half an hour, one hour, that really sets me up for a whole day. And that really gives me the positivity because look, as, as a human being, I don't think that, you know, we all are born positive. We all have that, you know, negative beliefs, limiting beliefs, you know, uh, days when we don't feel like doing things. So how can we make positivity a habit by only practicing that? only feeding our mind with positive thoughts as soon as we wake up. And even when you sleep, you know, before sleeping, if you write down your goals, as Grant also says, twice in a day, write your goals, then it will sit in your subconscious mind even when you sleep. And that's where your creative ideas or creative juices will keep flowing. Um, so that really gets me going. And of course, I listen to a lot of audio books a whole day. I, I will just 
plug in audio books and finish probably, you know, one book in two days or three days. So that gives me a good boost. Whatever negativity is there outside, I, I don't really, you know, bother. Nothing really shakes me. So I think try that out because having the positive mindset is really, really cru crucial, not only just for your cold calling or business, but overall in, in life, I think it's really, really vital. Yeah, I think I sort of, um, uh, so I do the goals every day and, you know, write down my goals, the, the habits, but I think I kind of miss the, the timing part that you talk about. Like, cause I, what happens is I write down my goals midday. Like I usually, when I get, you know, some time off, usually in the afternoon to kind of rest or in the no mid noon, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll write down the goals, but the, you're mm -hmm. right. It doesn't have the same profound effect because I'm usually between things and I know I'm just finished something. I have to start something else. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I completely disregarded the whole morning routine habit thing. And, and it's a shame because I live in a, in a beautiful power apartment. I have like a sauna, uh, a gym, like just, oh, wow. beneath, just like, I just go down the elevator and it's there. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I've never really, you know, thought about actually doing that as part of the routine, like waking up uh, with like not taking the phone, just going down. And I also, I use my phone to log the, the daily reports because I really like technology and everything, but it's not as accessible as, um, as a notepad, like they're just sitting there mm -hmm. waiting for you to write on it. Mm -hmm. you know, it yeah, absolutely. Effort, you know, to create a new note and copy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, and, and I'm sure you're reading or, you know, do you read books a lot or what does your reading time look like? Um, it changes. When I focus more on sales, I tend to watch more videos, like more kind of Grant Cardone stuff uh, that really gets me going. Uh, mm -hmm. When I'm not focusing so much on sales, then I do read a lot of audiobooks. Listen to Okay. Them. Well, you may want to check out Dan Locke. You know, if you like Grant Cardone, uh, I'm not sure. Have you heard of Dan Locke? Yeah, I, he's uh, one of Dan Pena's mentees. That, that's actually how, how I heard of Dan Pena. Oh, yes. Because he made the, he compiled yes, all of his yes. free footage. So, you know, I think, I think. Yes, yes, yeah. He is definitely, you know, one of the guys that we should definitely follow. So, you know, do, you know, whenever you get time, just go to Dan Locke's YouTube channel and check out his playlist and specifically check out the list, which uh, talks about the high ticket sales and sales uh, in general. So, you know, those are the playlists that you should definitely watch right from beginning till end. And if you get an opportunity, try and attend one of his webinar where he's talking about high ticket sales. Because things which he is teaching, like I've I followed Grant Cardone, you know, I actually opened my eyes in this beautiful world because of Grant Cardone and his 10x school book. Uh, but I soon realized that you know there are different people who have different genres, you know, which is even advanced than what Grant Cardone is teaching. So Grant Cardone is more a pushy salesperson, push, 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 call, call, call. Hey, why are you not going to do business with me? You know, I'm going to call you till you die. That sort of approach he has. Aggressive. And Dan Long has a different, yeah, he's very aggressive. And till a certain point, it helps. But after, after a point, it actually detracts. You know, people, you know, start to, um, you know, go away from you. It, it works for some people, but I realize that there are better ways of doing it. And as a human being, if I have to convince somebody and push someone, you know, my product and service down the throat, whether they like it or not, I think that's not the way I want to do business. I mean, it may work for some others, but Dan Lok comes from a different app. Now, did you mute by accident? Yeah, I was getting a call or something, sorry. So mm -hmm. rather than, you know, we pushing, push, 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 aggressive, 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 Dan is a different person. He it's says- about more want... like attracting? Attracting, he pulls people, and then he says that, hmm, why do you think that we, would, we should do business? Why do you think I'm a right fit? So why qualifying, attracting. Yeah, I mean, he comes as an authority saying that, hey, I'm not sure you're the right fit. 
I don't think we can do business. Why are we on the phone today? Like he comes from that aspect. You know, when you come from that power, you have this, you know, you have sky is the limit, right? Some of the books, which I would highly recommend you, sh you should definitely read is uh, one of them is uh, oversubscribed by Daniel Priestley, right? He's one of the you know, millionaires in uh, UK. He's got amazing books, you know, pick up his books. That will give you a different dimension. Of course, you know, I would suggest you to pick up a few money by Dan law. Again, a profound book, just like 10 X rule. A few money also is an amazing book. Uh, but I highly recommend you check out Dan Locke's channel and, you know, just binge watch some of his videos. Some people really instantly click with him. Some people take time to click with him. Uh, but for me, I think, I think, you know, moment I connected with him, the day when I interviewed him, you know, I liked that guy, you know, he, I, it, he just clicked. Oh, you, you interviewed him? Oh yeah. Yeah. I interviewed Dan Locke. Um, That's pretty cool. Yeah. I, I was watching. Yeah, yeah, he's an amazing guy and very, very nice and very generous that, you know, he gave me his time. I also interviewed Evan Carmichael. I interviewed Patrick Bet David. So, hmm. yeah. You could also, if you're really into the interview stuff, you could, I, I think there's a really, really good chance you can get um, Ed Milet in an interview. Ed? Ed Milet? Ed Milet. Um, e D okay. Ed mm -hmm. Milet. Uh, he's uh, one of uh, Grant Cardone's uh, best friends. Okay. Uh, also worth around 300, 400 million. Um, mm, okay. I have a friend who has a fitness channel. Like, like a dude's like nobody. Nobody knows him. And he, mm -hmm. got, he got the guy to talk, like, because he's uh, really promoting himself lately. He's actually in a completely mm -hmm. different, like, he's not, he was like in the security and finance industry and only like last year decided to go into coaching. So now he, mm -hmm. he'll basically, he's very receptive to doing interviews and stuff. Uh, the, again, oh, the guy's a good. really rich motherfucker. Like he has a private plane and like five homes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, like kind of Grant Cardone money. Okay. Um, so yeah. Um, cool. I mean, yeah, it gave me a lot, a lot of really good practical uh, tips like lots of stuff that I'm going to implement like the morning routine like uh, doing calls like warming up before you do the calls um, I'll check out Dan Locke obviously mm -hmm. and I, I really I feel that in when I focused mostly on coaching that sort of was the difference like I never had to push with coaching I always felt like um, you know, I, I just gave a ton of value, like a shitload of value and the right people mm -hmm. would usually buy. And I could be a lot, you know, I could be more salesy and I could try more to close. Uh, but in general, I was happy with the results. And um, mm -hmm. whereas with what I'm doing with the web design, the difference is I have these conflicting voices in my head. You know, when I'm about to go into a meeting, mm -hmm. like one voice is telling me, uh, you know, just give them a lot of value. You just be their friend, you know, be happy, focus on, you know, good vibes, helping them, whatever happens, happens. And another voice, I hear Grant Cardone yelling, like, you know, you need to close, you need to make it, make it happen. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, melt, liquefy the excuses, you know, like, so, so, so yeah, I mean, that, that, that's, Def, what, the funny thing, it's actually, you're right. I mean, when I was focusing more on the sales style where I was just giving a lot of value, I really looked forward to the calls. They were a lot more fun and mm. I didn't have any problem closing. And it's mm. actually now where I'm more, I'm more pushy. So I try to, you know, when exactly do you know, will you know, you know, is there anything stopping you from going for this right now like like a lot more uptight yeah um, it, and it doesn't help robbie i'm telling you very honestly i tried that out you know i have been in sales for 16 long years i tried grant cardone style as well and i tried dan lock style as well me as a person i'm not a pushy salesperson, and i tried that techniques several times and every time i did that it just turned the customer off right what's stopping you from taking the decision like 
sales, I think it's, it's not about using cheesy lines or pushy tactics. It's not about that. It's the human to human connection and being a human being, but providing more value and loading the person with the value. I think this is the ideal way to do business. And um, in the long run also, that's what's going to help. Like ever since I got exposed to Dan Lok's style of closing and you know selling, I would never go back to Grant Cardone style. Except for, I money. mean, I noticed like, for example, prospecting. Mm, yeah, Cardone prospecting you can about. definitely, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. For prospecting, yes, I would use Grant Cardone. But for closing, uh, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. I would not use Grant Cardone style for closing. You know, prospecting is good. You know, staying uptight, attitude should be good, positive, pump up, you know, building rapport. You know, that's all good. But, you know, after that certain point, I want to just be me and, you know, want to be in the position of authority. So just to give you, you know, an idea, and, and today I did a workshop which was uh, consisting of about 40 people. Yeah, if you if you exclude my you know uh, my friends and people who are helping me, so there were thirty five people who came for the workshop, which just happened recently last weekend. And once I was done with the workshop, I gave them the offer that hey, if you got the value and if you think I am the right guy, you know, I would want to give you an option. I would want to mentor you. How many of you would love me to mentor you? to help you teach what I'm doing and help you reduce your learning curve and implement that faster within one year. So most of the hands went up, okay? And I gave them the offer, which was like, uh, in the US dollars uh, was about equivalent of $4,000 per person, which is a lot of amount for any average, uh, you know, nine to five goer or salaried person. In, in, um, in, 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 in the United States, it's a lot. In India, it's a lot. <laughs> Huge, right? Huge. Yeah. Of course, I gave, gave them the options, uh, you know, the installment options and all that thing. Uh, but at the end of the session, out of 35 people, I actually got about nine or 10 people who were really, really interested to sign, sign me up as a mentor. Of course, after giving a little bit of discount and you know, early birds and all and installment options. Um, then I handpicked out of all that, I handpicked six people who wanted to be mentored and who had the same values and belief system that I have and who I know that I can help and mentor them. So I closed in one day, I closed six people and I never had to use any sales technique. I never had to say that, hey, what's stopping you from taking a decision, right? You've got only two choice, you know, one is this, one is this. If you don't do this, this is what's gonna happen. What are the positives? Let's, let's do the, uh, Ben Franklin close, right? Let's look down what are the positives, you know, if you do this and what are the negative that you do this. I did none of that shit. I mm -hmm. did not have to, okay? Because I gave the value on, on your lines that it's mm -hmm. all about more value you provide and you yeah. become an authority. Once you become an authority and you have like a power to pick and choose who you will work with, at the end is your positioning. Once you have the positioning well, once you show the value, and then you see, choose that, okay, out of all these people, I'm going to only work with these many. And I mean, as a lot, right? Uh, I've learned a lot in the last one, one and a half, two years, uh, how to position yourself, how to write a book, how to coach, how to train, how to you know, sell from the stage, how to close big tickets one-on-one. -on -one. I, I just you know, jump into the pool of learning and development. And I've read so many books in the last one and a half years that, now I know my stuff and how to position myself and how to become an authority, whether I am or not, at least for those people, I am an authority, right? I may not be authority for whole India, which does not matter. All I need to do is I need to be an authority, a celebrity authority for only hundreds or thousands of people. That's about it. That's what yeah. I've learned. So, yeah, I mean, how many people are in, in India? How many people are in India? Yeah. The population, total population, mm -hmm. it's 1.2 billion, I think. <laughs> so you have to, uh, you have to influence less than 1% of India. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. And maybe cool. even lesser than 1%, not even 1%, less than 1% yeah. also. Less than 1%. Yeah, yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Point, probably point, point 0.1%, I would say. 
that's all I need in the loyal followers 0.1% and you know those people who love my book who love my video love my YouTube channel love my posts I just need 0.1% of the entire population in India to just like me and feel that I am the celebrity just take the autograph or whatever it is that's the only positioning I need to live the life that I really dream of and I, that, nice. that's the truth People actually go for like millions. I want to impact millions. I want to be a million. Of course, I want to in the long run. But to really be successful at what I'm doing in my business, I don't need millions. I just need thousands of people. That's about it. Yeah. Also, it, it kind of, uh, I'm guessing with the money you're making now, um, like five years ago, you're like, I just need that to be, you know, to be happy and now you, you'll get there and they'll oh only 10 million that's nothing that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah my money is never a driver for me initially it was uh, probably three years ago when I was not enlightened uh, when I was not really lit up I did not have mission and purpose at that time probably money was important because I was just looking at the commercial aspect like you know 10% hike 20% hike 50% hike you know jump 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 one job to another job uh, and I realized that was the stupidest thing to do, right? More you chase money, farther you will be from becoming rich. Because most of the successful people, they ne nobody chased money. Of course, money is good. So somewhat, I contradict with what uh, Grant is saying. Initially, I also was like, rah, rah, in terms of money, 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 who's got my money? Show me the money. But I realized, no, that's not me. That's not really me. You know, I realized all the greatest of the greatest they never chase money like Oprah Winfrey. She was never, never into it for money. And there are so many examples I can give you. They were into it because they were passionate about it. They were into it because they wanted to contribute. They into it because that was something which really fulfilled them. And to me, my real asset is when somebody gives me a review, somebody sends me a note saying that Dave, you, know, you had a profound impact on me. I read your book. I saw your video and it really, really helped me to change my life or whatever it is. Even if it's a small impact that mm -hmm. it had an impact on me. That is the currency which I live for. And that's where probably I align more with Gary V, you know, which he also is more somewhat, you know, in line. I have similar value to him. He's more people person. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he will, he will forego the opportunities uh, on the table for just talking to his fans, right? Ask Gary V. You know, he will let, you know, he leave the money on the table just to talk to his fan where he's not making any money. But that is what makes Gary Gary. Right. So, you know, I'm more aligned towards Gary and Dan Lock more now, um, you know, after doing little bit of soul searching and realizing who I am, what am I passionate about and why am I, am I doing what I'm doing today? Yeah. And I mean, once you reach uh, like a level where you're comfortable, where you don't like think about money anymore, you don't worry about money, you just, you know, you, know, you'll, you always have money. Uh, at that point, you're... You, you, you do this mindset thing of, uh, oh, I don't care about the money. You know, I, I like the reviews. I like that. Um, I've, always, I've also been in situations where I didn't have the money and I got like the reviews and the love. And, and you actually tend to get pretty cynical. Like, uh, you know, like, oh, fuck you. You know, like, thanks for the review, but, but I don't have the money. So that doesn't help me. <laughs> uh, so it's, uh, I think it's both. I think it's both. <laughs> you need to have a balance. You need to have a balance, right? You cannot just have love and no money. You know, you're just struggling with, you know, meeting your ends meet. You need to have yeah. some money coming in. Uh, but yeah, you will reach a point where money would not even matter, you know. And then whatever you will do, money will come to you. And if you're doing it with the right intention. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I just feel that more more people I impact, more, more people, more and more lives I touch, more money I will make. You know, I know it, money is there. It's just waiting to get accumulated. Uh, money is there, right? I, I can feel it. And then the day when you feel it, I think it will happen, it will happen to you. Yeah, 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 you feel it in the air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, um, awesome. I mean, that, that, like, look, you, you gave like really, really good advice and uh, Lots of stuff that, you know, as you said, like, I've, I, I know this stuff, but it doesn't matter. Like, it matters whether you're, you know, you know it with a capital K. You don't just know about it or learn about it or did it once. Uh, yeah. And, uh, no, I, I think you, you, you did pretty good. I think, you know, it's just that you got a little bit carried away with the commercial thing and the website designing thing. You know, it's not a bad thing. But, you know, I would want to see the Robbie who was before, you know active, sharing, caring, adding more value, doing five videos a day, 
you know, I would love to have that Robbie back because see, that is who you are as a person and that really right. fulfilled you. Now that was actually driving you when you're walking or doing whatever, that was your commitment, you know, massive action and giving value. Parallelly, you can still do the videos, uh, sorry, the website development, all that thing, but don't let that, you know, real you fade away just because of making money. Right. Have, yeah. have somewhere, have somewhere, you know, balance of both. You need to have money also, and the day will come when your passion will outperform your, you know, your need, mm -hmm. and that's where magic will happen. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't like. I, I love doing the web design as like as a form of giving value. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like the problem is uh, just just like you said, like the the clothes itself. The point of you know you actually meet the person um, when you too when you're too much you know invested in you know learning from Gant Cardone and you kind of more hard closing. Um, so you all you want to do is like just give value and kind of like love the people and help them the right people obviously. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you have the initial hurdle of the prospecting call and that's, that's where, you know, like we talked about, you can be a bit more aggressive because you, you don't know who that person is. You're still filtering out people you want to talk to versus people you don't. But once mm -hmm. you get past there, um, the problem was, again, I, I get to the meeting and I'm like, I, like very reluctant to give value. So it's like, it's more about mm -hmm. this is the value you'll get in the future if we work together versus like giving value now, you know, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I, yeah, I want to give that value, you know, but I, I can't. Yeah. I, I can't. yeah, you're just holding yourself back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I think, I think you should not, you should let go and you give the value, more value you give than I think people will come back. Yeah, you know, me as a person, I don't look don't look at somebody to you know close and just do business now. I when I'm doing something, I'm I'm entering in a long run. You know whether people want to take advantage of me, you know whether I do a free coaching. I I do a lot of free coaching still now, and you know if they take advantage of me and get benefit, I know they will come back to me. You know they will remember me. Said hey, they gave me this advice and well, everything will come back. It's karma. You know I I truly believe in that. Uh, and if my work is genuine and if they work with me, you know, I want to give value upfront before they even work with me because I'm looking at a long term, not just this deal. I want them to come back to me and work with me over and over again. And if I do the more value thing first, then I definitely outbeat my competition and I differentiate myself automatically. All right. Yeah, I agree with everything you said. Um, awesome. So I'll, I'll keep you updated, I guess, uh, in a week or two. I'll implement all the changes starting this week. Um, again, lots of really good stuff. And uh, hopefully if, uh, if I implement everything, you know, the daily, the morning routine and, and um, just, uh, you know, treating the whole cold calling thing a bit differently, not thinking about taking value, but giving value. Uh, hopefully if I do that, that will, that will completely lift the block that I have for cold calling. Um, you know, obviously everybody, nobody wants, nobody likes cold calling because, you know, you talk to people you don't know, but, <laughs> but, uh, maybe I'll try to be more yeah. humorous and I'll, again, I'll implement everything you said. So I'll go back to the, uh, recording and I'll, I'll go through the kind of make a list of the things you advised. Sure. Sure. Great. Well, I'm glad that, you know, we had this conversation and, you know, a little bit, whatever value I could provide to you. No, don't, don't demean it. It was a lot of value. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you a lot. And uh, we'll stay in touch, dude. Absolutely. Thanks, Robbie. Nice talking to you. You too, Dev.